So we're reading from 14 lessons in yogi philosophy and oriental occultism, lesson seven, human magnetism. A number of interesting experiments along the lines of human magnetism may he try. If you have a number of friends interested in this subject, you may try this experiment. Let a party sit around in a circle holding hands and all concentrate their minds on the common purpose of sending a pranic current or current of magnetism around the circle. There must be a common understanding of the direction else some will be sending in one direction and some in another and the benefit of the cooperation will be lost. A good plan is to send the current in the direction of the movement of the hands of a watch around its face. That is, pick out some person to represent the figure 12, and then start the current moving in the direction of right from that person. If the party is harmonious and the conditions are favorable, they will soon feel a faint tingling like a weak current of electricity moving through them. This practice, if moderately indulged in, will prove invigorating to all concerned in it, but will not. But we would not advise that the sittings be continued too long as it might produce a sufficiently strong current that might be conducive to the production of psychic phenomena, which should not be too, frequent, too freely indulged in by those who are not familiar with the laws of psychic phenomena. We do not approve of indiscriminate and unintelligent production of phenomena of this sort. One should learn something of the laws before he attempts to produce phenomena. Our little book, Science of Breath, gives in condensed form a number of methods of using pranic force or human magnetism. And we refer the students to that book after he has finished this lesson. All of our publications dovetail one into the other as each and as each one is read, others become plainer. Of necessity, we must condense our information and must trust to a careful reading of all the lessons on the part of our students in order that they may obtain best results. In order not to go over the same ground twice, we must refer the students to Science of Breath for directions and exercises calculated to increase the absorption of prana and also for directions regarding its distribution. Chapters 14 of Science of Breath gives you some valuable information along these lines. In this chapter, paragraph two furnishes a fine exercise for the increased absorption of prana and its distribution to all parts of the body, strengthening and invigorating all the cells, organs, and parts of the body. This exercise will seem doubly valued to you now that we have gone a little deeper into the subject of prana or magnetism. Paragraph three of the same chapter instructs you how to inhibit pain by the direction of prana. Paragraph four instructs you the direct directing of the circulation. Paragraph five gives you information on self-healing. And paragraph six gives you a short course on healing of others, which is followed carefully by, which if follow, followed carefully by you will make you a good magnetic healer. Paragraph seven instructs you in distant healing. The next chapter, chapter 15, gives you information regarding thought projection by means of sending this distant thoughts charged with prana, directions for forming a protective aura, which you, will enable you to resist the thoughts and pranas of others if desired. This information is especially valuable and we urge upon the student that he acquire this practice of forming a protective aura as he will find it of use to him many times. Our fifth lesson also contains directions for the same thing, going a little more into detail than does Science of Breath. Chapter 15 of Science of Breath also tells you how to recharge yourself and how to recharge others with prana. Also how to charge water and quite a number of valuable exercises and directions for the use of pranic force or human magnetism, much of which has, so far as we know, never been printed before. A casual reader of these concluding lines might very naturally suppose that we are trying to sell science of breath to our students by reason of these constant references to it. We beg to inform such casual reader of a fact which all of our students realize without being told, and that is that nearly every student of this class has read science of breath. 
generally before he has purchased this course. Consequently, he is not a good subject for another sale of the same book, so we must be relieved of the suspicion of an inordinate desire to sell our book by means of praising them in our lessons. Our real reason for this repeated allusion to science of breath is that we have noticed that the average student, even though he has reread the little book several times, does not begin to realize the large amount of information contained within its pages until his attention is called to it. Then we know that if he takes up the book after our calling his attention to it, he will be able to understand this particular lesson much better by reason of the reference to the book. Likewise, he will understand the book better by reason of just of having just read the lesson. We wish to keep hammering away at these ideas until our students have firmly grasped them. These students are intended as lessons, not as merely interesting reading. They are intended to teach something not merely to amuse our students. So if the student wishes to practice the workings of chronic energy or human magnetism, we cheerfully direct him to signs of breath in which he will find enough to keep him busy for a while. In our lesson eight on occult therapeutics, we will also give him some work to do if he desires with a few exercises new to him. As we have before said, these lessons must be read and reread in connection with one another as one lesson will throw light on another and vice versa. They are all parts of the one thing. All stones building, all stones going to build up the temple. Each has its place and each fits into the other. To those among our students who have not reached that state of perfect health, which the yogi philosophy teaches is desirable, as it fits the body for use as a perfect instrument of the ego, to those who are suffering from disease and ill health, we urge the practice of increasing the supply of prana by means of the breath, the food, and the fluids, as stated in this lesson, and in science of the breath. A careful and constant practice of this absorption and storage of prana will benefit every person, particularly those not in perfect health. Do not despise the body as it is the temple of the living spirit. Tend it well and make it a worthy instrument of it. Seventh lesson, mantra and meditation. I absorb from the universal supply of energy, a sufficient supply of prana to invigorate my body, to endow it with health, strength, activity, energy, and vitality. The above mantra and the following subjects for meditation are designed to build up the physical body in order to render it a more perfect instrument, instrument for the expression of life. Our previous mantra and meditations have been designed for mental and spiritual development, but we realize that many are burdened by bodies manifesting in harmony and lack of perfect health, and we think it is advisable to follow up this month's lesson on prana and human magnetism with a mantra and meditation along the lines just mentioned. Let the student place himself in a comfortable position. And after composing his mind, let him repeat the mantra over a number of times until he experiences that particular rhythm and thrill that comes from such a practice. Then let him concentrate upon the idea of the great supply of chronic energy in the universe. The entire universe is filled with this great force. It's a great life principle whereby all forms of motion, force, and energy are made possible. Let him realize that he is free to draw upon it at will, that it is his own to use for the building up of the body, the temple of his spirit. And let him fear not to demand his own. Let him call for what it is, what is his feeling certain that just call that his just call will be answered let him breathe slowly according to the instructions regarding rhythmic breath science of breath chapter 13 and mentally picture the inflow of prana with each inward breath and the expelling of worn out and impure matter with each outward breath let him picture himself as being filled with the health strength with health strength and vitality full of energy and life bright and happy 
If tired or fatigued during the day, let him stop for a moment and inhale a few deep breaths, carrying the mental picture of the inflowing prana and the casting out of diseased matter through, through the breath. You will find that he experiences an immediate feeling of increased strength and vitality. This prana may be sent to any part of the body, which seems to call for help and strength, and a little practice will enable the student to have such control that he can plainly feel the tingling sensation accompanying the passage of the prana to the afflicted or tired part of the body. If one is lying down, the passing of the hands over one's body from the head downward with an occasional resting of the hands over the solar plexus will be found beneficial and soothing. The hands may be easily charged with prana by extending them loosely at full length and gently swinging them to and fro and occasionally making a motion as if one was sprinkling water on something by throwing it off from the fingertips. A tingling sensation will be felt in the fingers and the whole hand will be so charged with prana that it will relieve pain in other parts of the body and in the bodies of others if you desire to help them. Carry the thought of health strength, activity, energy, and vitality into the silence with you. Oh, good morning, Amanda. I didn't see Amanda join. Good morning. So I remember reading this the first time and like, I got to read that science of breath book. I got to read that science of breath book and I never did. There is a free PDF of it though. So I don't feel like he's, he's trying to trick me into buying it. Yeah, so maybe we do that one next. Yeah, I know Jackie wants to read it too because she bought it. It was like a dollar on her Kindle. Yeah, that sounds good. And Jermaine, I, you're reading I, a book on breath right now too, right? Yeah, but then I had to return it to the library. Oh. So I didn't finish it yet. <laughs> yeah, I felt the same way. I was like, gotta read this one. Yeah. If we have anything to say, share, or questions, otherwise we can start breath work on this Monday. Yeah, I'm ready for breath. Okay. <clears throat> So I'll set up nice and tall, take a few breaths in through the nose, out through the nose, and create a mudra with your left palm and your hand bringing pointer and thumb to touch, let it face up, bring your right hand over to the face, close the right nostril with the thumb, inhale through the left, close left, exhale right, inhale right, close right, Oops, I messed up. My brain went somewhere else. We have to start over. <laughs> or you can keep going on your own. Inhale through the left. Close left. Exhale right. Inhale right. Close right. Exhale left. Inhale left. Close left. Exhale right. Inhale right. Close right. Exhale left. Just take a few more rounds on your own breath, breath. And if you're working with your lockdown retention, you can add that into the practice.
So exhale out the left side when you feel ready. You want to join me in three rounds of bumblebee breath. You'll close the ears with the thumbs and place the peace fingers over the eyes, closing out the senses. Inhale and exhale with the lips sealed, creating a humming sound as you exhale at the back of the throat, creating vibrations in the body, sounding like a bumblebee. Inhaling. You'll do three to five rounds just on a rolling basis. Finishing up any breath work and moving into your meditation. I'm setting the timer, taking your time to join us.
bringing hands to heart center. Namaste.